everyone, Sojin here, back again with another video. It has been a little while um, since I've done a video like this, and I decided to do something a little different. Instead of a top 5 or top 10 type of video, I decided to do something a little in between and do a top 7 Nintendo Switch games of 2022 today. I have acquired every single game on this list this year. They have left an impression. So I'm going to start off with number 7 going down the list to number 1 being the best. I'm going to start off with number 7 and that is Nier Automata. And the reason why I put Nier Automata at number 7 is because I actually have not played it as much as I should be. So I got this via pre-order from Best Buy for about $39.99 I believe. Actually no, I think it was like $29.99. I can't remember. It was around 30 something bucks after taxes and shipping but this is the original cover of course on the inside I decided to reverse it because I just like this it looks cool and of course this is a little paper it came with but um I gotta say my first several hours of gameplay just me playing this game by myself didn't even go live or anything uh, my first impressions were really good runs at a steady 30 frames per second, um, as expected on the Nintendo Switch, of course, and I gotta say, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm really, really enjoying this game. This game did come out this year, and I recommend picking it up if you can find it for a decent price. Like, my first impressions are really good. I still have yet to go deeper into the game, but it is on my list because it had such a good impression on me. So that's number seven. At number 6, I picked Bayonetta. Bayonetta 1 on the Switch. Now, I know those of you are like, oh, Bayonetta is not a new game. Bayonetta didn't come out in 2022. The reason why this is on my top 7 list is because the physical edition of this game came out this year. And I thought, why not? I'm going to add it as an exception. I bought it physically at a GameStop for about 30 bucks. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I never actually played any of the Bayonetta games before the Switch. So for me, it's a first time experience in 2022 with the physical game. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people out there with Nintendo Switches that can say the exact same thing. So that's exactly why it's on my top seven list here. It's at number six because it is a lot of fun. I've poured in a lot more hours into this game than I did in Nier Automata. I haven't beaten it yet, um, I'm still kind of playing through it. It's a goofy game, it's very silly, you just pick it up and, and a lot of times it does feel mindless, but it is a lot of fun. I am actually having a lot of fun with this game. I highly recommend it if you can pick it up physically uh, from an actual store that will sell it to you for about 30 bucks versus a scalper that will sell it for almost double or triple. I do apologize, I was going to show the inside of each game and I didn't do that. Here's the inside of Bayonetta. Not much to look at, but that's her gun stilettos <laughs> and uh, the cartridge. Pretty cool. You can reverse it if you want to. But at number five, I picked Little Witch No Better. I picked Little Witch No Better because, hands down, I freaking love this game. And number five, I actually have a lot more fun playing this game than I realized. And it, what more can you ask for? It is a first-person shooter game where you go around a pretty massive dungeon. You play as a little witch, and it's first-person shooter with magic. It's really cool. And some of the puzzles are very intriguing and very interesting to the point where when you finally figure out said puzzles, you're like, wow, that was actually really cool. Like, I can't really explain it all that much, but I'll do my best to leave a link in the description below with a live stream when I actually played this game. When I was actually faced with a puzzle that kind of baffled me, and when I figured it out, it was quite interesting and really cool. So I'm not going to do any timestamps or anything like that. I mean, I'll try to see if I can do a timestamp, but either way, I'll do my best to leave a link in the description. If I don't leave a timestamp, I apologize, but I'll try my best to do so. And uh, here's the inside of Little Witch No Better. Not much to look at, but it did come with a little cool card here. It's like a very thick card uh, with the information on it for PlayAsia, I believe. So I put it in here because it looks like a card, like a trading card, and it's very thick, like an amiibo card, in, if that makes sense. I would probably say hard plastic like a debit card. 
But yep, that's the official website for Little Witch Nobetta. Thought it was PlayAsia, but it's actually for their website. Pretty cool. And I figured because there's really nothing in here, I decided to just put it in a card sleeve since I used to collect trading cards and just slap it in there. Something to look at at least. And there's the cartridge. I do believe Little Witch Nobetta is coming to the US physically for the Nintendo Switch. That'll be interesting to see whether if they actually add full English voice acting because this game has Japanese voice acting with text that you can read. So it would be kind of cool if they added English voice acting to the US version when this comes out. I am curious to see if that's the case because if it is, I will definitely be purchasing the US version to add it to my collection because that's how much I love this game. However, if it's the same thing where they just become lazy with the port and make it so that you have to read the English text and Japanese voicing, I'm not even going to bother and I wouldn't even recommend it, but definitely look out for that. So, At number four, I picked Ender Lilies. Ender Lilies is an amazing game. This is a Metroidvania. If you don't know what a Metroidvania is, a Metroidvania is basically a game that plays like Metroid and plays like Castlevania. It has a little bit of both in between, or sometimes all the above. And most Metroidvania games usually have all the above between both games. And Ender Lilies does not disappoint. It definitely has the best of the best. The best of both worlds. <laughs> Ender Lilies definitely has the best of both worlds. And it's really awesome. Like, it's got pretty deep story behind it um, with a lot of text-based reading. But I'm telling you, it's worth reading through it. The story is amazing. I don't want to give away exactly what it's all about. But it is an RPG. Even though it is a Metroidvania game, you can level up. And you can get more power-ups and everything. It is really cool. I don't want to say too much and give away a lot, but it is a very fun game. If you like Metroidvania games and RPGs mixed together with really cool storytelling and you don't mind reading it, definitely pick this up. There's a really cool short story. I do believe I read online somewhere that this is also coming to the US physically for the Switch, so definitely look out for that. So these two normally you can get right now on PlayAsia, I wanted to point that out. Um, I imported Little Witch No Better myself off of PlayAsia. Don't remember exactly how much I paid for it. Ender Lilies I actually purchased at a local game shop, which is really cool that they had it in stock and it looked interesting and I'm glad I picked it up. All right, so last three games here. Number three, I had to pick Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. The only reason why it's not lower in the list, as in better than number three, is because there are some things in Crisis Core that I really wish they had fixed and replaced that they kept in the game that were really annoying when playing on the PSP, as far as activating combat mode, combat mode complete, y'all know what I'm talking about, and just some other annoyances. But other than that, it is a really amazing remake. I have not played it all the way through yet, but I have played uh, several hours in enough to tell you that this is an amazing remake. If you are a fan of Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core and you played it on the PSP originally, you will enjoy this way more. And I gotta say, it runs really, really well on the Nintendo Switch. I was not able to live stream it, but I played it on my own and had Cammy witness it. Steady, 30 frames a second. There were times that I was fooled into thinking it was 60 frames per second with some of the pre-rendered cutscenes. But either way, this game runs really well. I love this game. Um, I have the Steelbook Edition here from the pre-order from Best Buy. Here's the inside. It's honestly a lot more to look at than the original case itself, so that's why I'm showing this off instead, because on the inside of the other case, that it came with, there's nothing inside. It's kind of disappointing, but I really love having this. This is so cool. I highly recommend picking up Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion, especially if you were hesitant on getting it on the Nintendo Switch. Get it on the Switch. It runs perfectly. All right, so last two games here. We're gonna go to number two. Number two, I had to pick Xenoblade Chronicles 3. 
Uh, the only reason why this is not at number one is because there were times I felt like the game went on for a little too long and at about 50 plus hours into the game I really wanted the story to start wrapping up and it just felt tedious at times however as a whole this game is massive this game is truly amazing I love Xenoblade Chronicles 3 I highly recommend this game for anybody who just wants a massive game world to get lost into and you don't want to play anything else for 80 plus hours possibly even more than 100 hours and you could just easily get lost with the many side quests it is an amazing experience i i will say that you do not have to play xenoblade chronicles 1 or 2 to enjoy this story however if you were to play the first two games it would kind of like give you some things throughout this game where you're like oh that's a reference to Xenoblade 1, that's a reference to Xenoblade 2. Especially, not gonna spoil it, but some things at the end of the game. Either way, like I said, you do not have to play those games to get this game. So, here's the inside. I purchased this off of a website, I think for about possibly $20 off the retail price when it first came out, thanks to my friend Captain Derpy. He found the website that was uh, listing it for such a lesser price and I'm glad I have it um, honestly I'm okay without having the special edition that's way too expensive being sold in the aftermarket right now but either way I'm really happy to have this I highly recommend it it is definitely worth the full retail price if you can find it last but not least uh, I do have to say my number one pick out of all the other games that I've acquired this year in 2022 um, I really had to do it. I had to be that guy. I had to pick Pokemon Violet. But wait a minute. Isn't this uh, Pokemon Violet? I, I, I've never seen that case before. <laughs> so this is a custom Etsy case here. I'll try to leave a link in the description for that so you can check it out. But uh, yeah, someone was making these retro looking custom cases for Nintendo Switch Pokemon games. I do plan on picking one up for my Let's Go Pikachu game as well. But um, either way, with that being said, it's it's on top of the original case. Here's the game itself, Pokemon Violet. I poured in a lot of hours into this game, and don't get me wrong, the game is broken. With that being said, even though the game is broken with a lot of issues it has with glitches and such, it did not take away what's amazing about this game. And honestly, I loved everything about this game, especially the final parts of the game that just blew my mind away. I do not want to spoil anything about this game, but yeah, the final parts of the game really blew my mind away, especially music-wise and everything. Like, oh man, the atmosphere is just awesome. Um, I gotta say, I highly recommend Pokemon Violet or Scarlet to anyone who hasn't played them yet. Pokemon Violet, if you like futuristic Pokemon, and Pokemon Scarlet if you like ancient Pokemon. Just keep that in mind, they're basically pretty much the same games, just with those differences and some differences in the story, but the story should be overall almost exactly the same. Uh, with that being said, let me know what you guys think of my video. Let me know what you guys think of my list here. I'm just gonna do a little recap. Uh, number seven, I had Nier Automata. Number six, I had Bayonetta. Number five, I had Little Witch No Better. Ender Lilies at number four. Number three, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Number two, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And at number one, Pokemon Violet or Scarlet, whichever one you prefer. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, hit all notifications. I'm going to give you a secret code. The secret code lets me know that you watched the video all the way up until this point or to the very end. And I'll heart your comments if you leave the secret code in the comments below. It is also your way to be invited to my Discord. If you leave me the secret code down below in the comments, I will personally reach out to you and be like, hey, you want to join my Discord? And you can either respond yes or no. If you respond yes, I'll send you an invite. The secret code is Pokemans. Yes, Pokemans. P-O-K-E-M-A-N-Z. Pokemans. Put that down below in the comments. Put that phrase there and I'll heart your comments. I will also uh, reach out to you and be like, hey, you want to join my Discord? Blah, blah, blah. And if you respond yes, I'll give you an invite. 
Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Be safe. Be excellent to each other. And thank you so much for watching once again. Bye-bye.